Hello YouTube, Marielle here. Like I said in my previous video, a lot has happened since my wolf was served this past Tuesday. As you know, the wolf was served just before he left for work. One thing I don't believe I never spoke about is that the wolf drives a motorbike every day to work. Throughout the years, I've been able to use him as my weather forecast because he only drives his bike when there is no ch chance of rain. And he has never been wrong until Tuesday, 11th of April 2017. On that particular day, my wolf took his motorbike to work and it also happened that he rained heavily most of that day. A simple mistake he made, probably due to stress. That's what I thought until other events unfolded or throughout the day until the following day too. After hearing him during the conference call, the reasons behind his apparent innocent mistake became very clear. Taking the bike instead of the car was actually premeditated. I am sure of it after considering a few facts, starting with fact number one, my wolf has always had 100% forecast ability. Fact number two, since he was in the house when he got served, why didn't he pack his stuff in the car before driving off? There is a fact number three, which I will tell you, or which you will discover later on in the video, that proves that him taking the bike wasn't an accident at all. On the phone to my angel warrior, he mentioned that he left home only with the clothes on his back and it's been raining all day, which was completely true. It was the truth. And this is where I say that he has the ability to either manufacture situations or take advantage of any natural occurring situation that presents itself to either do harm, plant his poisonous seeds or make himself look good. And in this case, he used the situation to establish his own credibility. A move that allows him to start seducing people into lower, lowering their guards. Which of course only serves as a prelude to an eventual emotional and psychological breach of the target. Listening to that conference call proved to me that he does that with everyone. This is a well-established pattern of his. The thing is that the wolf is so skilled that everything he does cannot easily be spotted by innocent people. And normal people who go around expressing that their emotions, like I do, stand no chance against such a, such a skilled predator when other people, um, you know, come into the situation to judge. For example... At no point during the conference call did I hear my wolf directly complain about his treatment or the, unfair, or the unfairness of the situation. And I'm pretty sure other normal people under stress and when they're, you know, they're trying to, to yeah, they're trying to, 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 to explain themselves or explain the situation, they will confront, you know, they will approach the, su the, the, the subject by saying, you know, this is what happened and, and, you know, I didn't know or I didn't realize or, you know, and this happened to me and this was not fair, this was not right, how could this happen to me or something along those lines. Whereas the wolf never did that. The wolf only stuck to irrefutable facts. Only after doing that, he would openly leave it for my angel warrior to make her own decision, to come to her own conclusion. The only overt influence he, exerc he exerted that I was able to, 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 to identify was the tone of his voice, which is like always soft and hesitant. A voice that forces the target to underestimate him because he comes across as slightly shy and unsure. And when compounded with the fact he presented and the unfortunate rain, it all becomes impossible for, for the average feeling untrained person not to feel sorry for him or at the very least feel forced to express some polite, compassionate, kind words to him, which is exactly what he wants. And this is most probably how he 
I'm actually now thinking this must be how he usually gets, you know, his claws into his target. This is now how, how I think he does that and probably how he did it with me too. And this is the very reason why I call my wolf an emotional extortionist. He compels people into doing things or into feeling things without ever being forceful. To me, this demonstrates a lot of mastery and power. So, of course, I am now thinking, and I am sure of it, the entire meeting was initiated by him just to give him the opportunity to test my angel warrior level of empathy, loyalty, and also for him to plant his own poisonous seeds. seeds. It also became obvious to me that the wolf chose to drive his bike to work that morning so he could use the excuse of not having clothes to get back inside the house. And maybe he did that because he needed to buy himself enough time, you know, more time or extra time, time to think of a way to leave some other kind of mess behind for me to clean up. I'm actually grateful that I decided to... to, to to let him know that he could pick up his suitcases at my uh, uh, at my angel warrior's office rather than come here. You know, uh, normally I would have felt a little guilty and I would have felt like, you know what, it's just a simple thing. I would have just said, yes, he can come back here. And for some reason, you know, because at the time I hadn't processed everything, but my instincts were, no, he cannot come back here Um you know, he can just pick up the stuff over there uh, at her office. And I'm glad I, I made that decision. But when I, during the, the conference call, when my, when my angel warrior told him that, I heard the wolf's voice drop an octave, which is something he has never done before. I've never heard him do that before. And he said, I see I see, this is how it's going to be then. <laughs> I swear this is actually how he spoke. And in a tone of voice, which he, you know, um, I've never heard him uh, use before. And inside of me, I went, oh, 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 the wolf is taking this as a declaration of war. And, um, and it kind of scared me. But as scared as I am, I know there is no turning back for me. That's it. And the next part of the story I'm going to, to share with you here will also prove just how fast the wolf can manufacture an entire situation just so that he can regain control. When the wolf was served at 6 a.m. on Tuesday, last Tuesday, I slept during the whole thing. But I still heard his bike rumble away around six, six, uh, six or eight when he left. Yes, I did look. Somehow, I, my eyes opened, and I just happened to look over my my clock, and and the the, the and, and it read six or eight or something around just around there. It was either six or eight or six or nine, something like that. Also. Remember in my last video, I mentioned how my daughter said the wolf had already told her about the divorce before he left that very same morning. Now, the following morning, which was Wednesday, 12th of April, 2017, I woke my daughter up and I started by asking her a series of questions such as, do you think that I have bad intentions towards you? She said no. Do you feel safe around me? She answered yes. Do you feel like you can trust me with making good decisions for you? She answered yes. And based on those questions and her answer, I asked her to give me her phone. There's a reason why which you will find further along as a, you know, much later. She automatically refused and no matter what I said after that, she was just not budging. It was a clear no. And eventually, though, she said that the wolf had warned her not to give me her phone no matter what I said. 
I was left speechless, wondering, because I could not understand. How on earth did he know that I was going to do that? How, how could he have prepared ahead of time to tell her that? I still don't understand. Because as far as I know, my wolf did not know I was preparing to divorce him. You also have to take into account that I only discovered that my daughter was doing drugs. Um, it was on Friday night, Friday night, the 7th of April. And I decided only after the 7th to start searching for rehab facilities for her. And I only found a rehab center on Monday, 10th of April. And also, how could he have known that the first steps to send a child to, reha to rehab is to separate a child from their phone? How does he know that? Unless he was already aware of our daughter drug use. And therefore, the minute he found out that I was divorcing him, he knew, well, kind of knowing, you know, how I normally tackle things and how fast I move, that he knew that, I, you know, this would be my next step. That's all I can think of. And even then, I, even now, I don't think this is quite, I'm not explaining it quite clearly because I'm trying to figure out how he knew and how he could have prepared himself. And it's just not quite clear um, um, in my head. And how, how could he have known as well that I did find out that she was doing drugs? You know, because I only found out on Friday, so it's very, it's still very, very confusing to me, and I'm trying to make sense of it. But anyway, since my daughter refused to hand over her phone, I asked her to put her phone inside her purse and to put her purse around her neck because it's one of those long, long purses with a, with a, you know, with a long um, um, thing there, <laughs> and to sit with her hands on the dining table where I could see see them because I didn't want her to take the chance to start on texting under the table or to do something like that, you know, while I was distracted because she's extremely fast. That daughter of mine, you know, with her, it's always been a case of I had to have eyes right in front of, you know, my normal eyes. And then I had to have a pair of eyes on either side of the, of my, of my head. And as well as having, you know, a pair of eyes right in the back of, back of my skull. With my daughter, it's always been like that. She's extremely fast. So, um, so that's why I said to her, put your, put your hands, you know, uh, where I can see them. And then I proceeded to, to say to her that I, you know, uh, a few weeks ago, I bumped into a fr friends of hers who told me that she was using, uh, um, she was using drugs. Well, of course, between us, we all know that I found out that she was doing drugs. She was using drugs because of the voice recorder, recorders I've been putting in her, in her bedroom. But I wasn't going to tell her that, was I? So instead, I made up a fic fictitious friends, you know, of her instead. Uh, her immediate rebuttal was that I had no idea who her friends were. And whoever spoke to me was not a friend of hers. To which I simply replied that she was correct. I absolutely had no idea who our friends were. Just like I had no idea who, uh, where and with whom she spends her time with. But regardless, I still needed her to tell me whether or not she did drugs. Which she went on to deny um, and deny and deny. And finally, she admitted to the occasional marijuana uh, use. I then proceeded to tell her that, you know, just like she knew, I knew, both of us knew that she consumed beer. She consumes beer almost every day. That's when she asked me with a very derisive tone in her voice, you know, um, like, um, are you calling me? Are you calling me an alcoholic? I simply went on to say that I was concerned for her health because despite her clean bill of health, her heart was still not strong enough to withstand daily intake of alcohol and drugs. And this time she angrily asked me if I was calling her an addict. And again, I had to sidestep that mind by telling her that I strongly felt she needed help and the kind of help that I could not provide her with um, because I was myself, you know, busy and and suffering and going through my own issues and problems. And that's when she exploded on me. 
she went on to, to, to tell me how much of a bad mother I was, how I always play the victim, how I always act as if people are out to get me, and, and how I spend my time acting as if all of them are plotting against me. To which I quickly agreed with her and that I had been inconsiderate about her own pain and about her own struggles. I told her that she was right. And I was sorry for not being there for her, for not understanding her, for not being a good parent, for failing her. Yeah, I took responsibility for absolutely everything that you can think of. Anything that she threw at me, I said, I'm sorry, you're absolutely right. And then the next thing I, I, I did was to beg her to, therefore, um, since she knew that I was, you know, such a bad parent, uh, I begged her to, therefore, give me the opportunity to make things right. I begged her to allow me to do my job, you know, to do my mommy job, to allow me to do my parenting job, you know, to give me that opportunity and that chance. I told her that since I proved to be very inadequate, um, I, very, I strongly felt that he will be um, better if we got some third party involved she would feel more comfortable to speak with because obviously I have been you know um, we haven't been talking and um, and she basically doesn't come to me you know she doesn't feel comfortable talking to me and because of that it'll be better if we had somebody else she could she could speak with and right there and then, she told me in a very sarcastic manner that she was perfectly fine and she just did not need help. No kind of help at all, that's what she said. I calmly told her, for her to choose to do drugs and alcohol, to me it really shows that she was choosing to play Russian roulette with her life, especially because she is fully aware of her own heart condition. I also said that the only reason that I know of normal people to make that kind of a choice it normally shows that they are experiencing deep internal emotional turmoil, pain, confusion and also when their lives, lives are completely out of control. And this is something else, again, that I took responsibility for by, you know, it was obvious to me that because I grew up in an environment myself where I was not taught to explore my own, my, my own emotions and feelings, somehow I had inadvertently read them as well with that same deficiency. Now that I was fully aware of this, you know, my own failing, I felt it was important that she went to speak with someone who was a trained professional, someone who was qualified, somebody, somebody that could help her to untangle her, her emotion and teach, and teach her how to identify those emotions and how to name them. And after giving her all that, you know, speech, that's when she told me that her father, the wolf, told her to not go anywhere with me or talk to anyone and talk to no one before he left and he told her that if she did that it would make him look bad she also said that the wolf mentioned to her that i could use all of this against him um, um to make him look bad and against him during the divorce and that's the fact number three that i mentioned earlier in the video before once again i was left speechless because I could not, and I still cannot understand how the wolf could have known all of this ahead of time. But since he guessed right, why would he not want his daughter to get help? And this is where you, you see, despite my understanding of the beast, beast that I am dealing with, I was still left in shock. Um, and feeling very unprepared to just how how far he's taking things and how he he has manipulated his own daughter into trying to protect him at the cost of her own welfare and potentially losing her own life. This is very shocking for my daughter, our daughter, to go along with this, knowing fully well that what she's doing can kill her and that she actually needs help, 
is is unbelievable. It's just how far gone she is in her mind between the drugs and between her father I and between being a teenager. I just don't know what to make of her. I truly can't. And I have to wonder whether this is, you know, whether she's ever going to be able to snap out of it. Anyway, even after hearing when she said that, I had to remain blank, you know, uh, not react to that news. I had no choice but to forge on uh, by telling her, by telling her that talking to pro to professional would help relieve um, some of the internal pressure she most probably was feeling. So she eventually relented, and we both cried and hugged, and. But she made me promise to her that, you know, she was just going to talk to somebody and, but she was going to, you know, that was all, which was not true, but I could not tell her that I had no choice. And so we left, uh, but she left her phone behind. So when we got there, um, a counselor spoke to her and and showed her the facilities, uh, which she, she 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 ended up liking, and uh, and somehow she agreed without much fuss to stay to stay and start her her treatment, and and I have to say that I was so relieved um, that I broke down in front of the main counselor. I just could not stop myself crying, you know. Um, at one point, though, she turned to me when the counselor asked her, you know, do you do you like what you see? And then she said, yeah, 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 it's okay. And, um, and then the counselor said to her, fine, because you're staying. I saw her stiffen and, and turn around and, and look at me and... Um, and I told her, you know, I'm begging you. I am begging you, do this for me, you know. This is for me. Do this for me, for me, you know. And that's when she said yes. So since Wednesday, uh, the 12th of April, my daughter has been in rehab. And that was literally kind of 24, almost 24 hours after my wolf was served with the divorce papers as well as the restraining order. After dropping her off on Wednesday, that's when I called uh, child services. And the very next day, they sent someone to speak with my daughter um, in the morning uh, uh, in a rehab, rehab center. And then that same lady came to visit me, uh, you know, in my home. She took pictures of the home. She took pictures of, the, of my daughter's uh, uh, bedroom as well. And she took picture of the fridge. She took picture of everything that she could think of. And also inside my my daughter's bedroom, um, the day before, I actually found out that I actually saw in my daughter's uh, um, drawer, uh, chest of drawers, the paraphernalia of uh, drugs and bongs and lighters and little packages, little, you know, plastic things, and uh, 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 full of marijuana and, uh, and, empty, and empty packages as well. And that was um, kind of surprising to me because throughout, you know, the weeks and the months that, you know, that have passed by, gone by, I've always gone in and, and looked, you know, basically just look inside um, our bed bedroom to see whether I could uh, see anything, which I never saw anything except the bottles of beers. So, which me, but in the last, but because I've never found anything else in the last two weeks, I never actually looked. And, and I guess this is when she put those things in there because she kind of probably thought that I had, um, I no longer cared or I given up or something like that. So the CPS lady was able to take pictures of all of, of, of all of this as well. And we sat down and I just opened up to her and I explained everything. I explained my, I explained my struggles and what's been happening and how we've been living and how I haven't spoken to my daughter and all of those things. I said that to her. And that's when she also opened up and she told me that I really had to... Um, that I had a, 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 um, a big task ahead of me because um, my daughter had all the telltale signs of, of addiction. And then she left to interview the, the wolf. And all of that took place on Thursday, 13th of April, 2017. As of now, 
Child Protective Services have now launched an investigation against the wolf. But they warned, they warned me that they will not be able to do much because my daughter is turning 18 at the end of next month. But, you know, um, still I guess it's better than nothing. Tomorrow, Monday 17 of, sev of, uh, of April uh, 2017, first thing I'm going to do in the morning uh, will be to call my daughter's cardiologist. My daughter is five foot five, and normally she weighs around 120 pounds. And yet she, she entered rehab weighing only 96 pounds. And that morning when I, when, when uh, I hugged her, when we hugged, her breath was smelling of beer. So the entire time when I was trapped in my bedroom, and I could hear them be merry, laugh and eat, so I thought. The wolf made no attempt to help his own daughter. All he did was encourage her and, and enable her, enable her by giving her large sums of money. And encourage her not to go to, to school, not to find a job. Um, all of which was already established and, and going very, very well before he came back from Singapore. And when, after he came back, all of that went out of the window. And all my daughter did every single day was, you know, sleep, um, go out late in the night, you know, come back late. And, um, you know, sometimes she'll come back, you know, she, whenever, I, at the beginning when I used to see her, you know, her neck would be full of hickeys and everything. And obviously, if I saw, if I saw it, her father would, would obviously, there is no way he could not have seen it. And he'll say absolutely nothing. Um, he absolutely made no effort to either help her or provide her with guidance. All the while, he literally... Um, ejected me because that's what it is he ejected me from the life of those children and yet he's providing no guidance no help this is what it is like for me to have had children with an narcopath there is a fact number four somewhere that i've forgotten to mention earlier is that when i heard the conversation between my angel warrior and the wolf there is a part where he actually goes on to say to, to the angel warrior how he is uh, concerned with him being served the paper and the restraining order and not being able to go home. He's just concerned that me, the mother, I will not know where my daughter is, where she, what she gets up to and where she goes, that kind of thing. I was able to see how this is was this was his way of laying his tracks or planting seeds. What he did served two purposes. One was to establish himself as a very good father, a good parent, and a very very concerned parent. The other the other a uh, uh, purpose for saying that and for doing that was to plant seeds of doubt in t inside the mind of my angel warrior about me, about my parenting ability, so that later on he could spin that to use it to his advantage. Because it's very difficult to, to understand. And what he said is true. You understand what I'm saying? What he said is true. I don't know where my daughter goes. I don't know who she hangs up, who she hangs with. He used a truth to establish, not only to establish his, his integrity, um, using, using the truth, of course, but also to, to make himself look good and potentially ruin the, the trust and the relationship between me and my own lawyer. When somebody doesn't know the full picture, it's very easy to believe him. 
not realizing that he's the one who's created a situ the situation where my daughter and I, we don't communicate. A situation where me as a mother, I have no more power. I have no more control. I have no more say in my own daughter's life. He's created that situation, but unless you can prove it, unless you have everything to back your story, he wins. And again, this is where I, making the decision to send my daughter in rehab really, really uh, protected me because if you followed what I said earlier, it's easy to see how he could have actually flipped this entire scenario to blame me, not only for her issues, but he would have been able to establish me as the faulty parent. And by letting my lawyer know that, you know, me as a mother, I am not able to control my daughter. I don't know where she goes and all of those things. And with him being out of the house and, and this pattern to continue, just how bad I am. So by putting my daughter, by taking the steps of putting my daughter in rehab, Without realizing it, I think I protected myself. And this entire story, he would have found a way if I did not do what I did on time. He would have stepped in and, and played the hero and make me look bad and make me wear the full responsibility of everything. I really, I think I saved my own behind without even realizing it.